Hey everybody, it's Noah from Figure This Customs here, back with another action figure video, and today we will be doing a little review slash comparison um, with all of my Metal Gear Solid Snake figures. Uh, the new boy in question is, of course, the Lim Toys SS S++ version Ahab, the not Venom Snake from Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, Lim Toys is a third-party company who came along and gave us a definitive 112 version of one of the coolest characters from one of the coolest games uh, to come out in the past couple of years. So, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to get this guy as soon as he was announced. It was quite a long wait, but now he is here and he can sit alongside my other snake figures. Uh, these two are, of course, custom figures um, that I made uh, just uh, over the last two years, I think, um, from various parts and places. And so I'll do a little bit of a breakdown uh, for them after we take a look at this guy. We're just going to compare and see... Uh, what Lim Toys was able to do uh, with this new figure. So, yeah, let's get right into it. We're just going to look, take a closer look at Ahab here. Ahab is the name of the figure, of course, um, because in the Metal Gear Solid V game, you are given the code name Ahab when you are rescued from the hospital after waking up from a nine-year coma. Um, you're then informed, of course, that you are indeed uh, Big Boss, or Snake, as it is and you're the leader of Mother Base. Uh, I really love Metal Gear Solid V. It was one of my favorite games. I really I played through it twice. Um, and yeah, it was just absolutely incredible. The things that you were able to do in that game through the Fox engine um, that Kojima Productions was able to do is just incredible. It's an absolutely fun game. People go back and forth, I think, on whether the story was brilliant or not. Uh, I find Kojima to be a mad genius, so... Um, I really, really loved uh, the story, as well as just the gameplay elements. Um, but people in general agree that the game is is just fun, you know. So if you haven't played it, uh, check it out. I think it's really cool and worth your time. Um, as far as the detail goes on this guy, I think they are superb, okay. Um, lots of little details in the face here. Uh, there's lots of scars. Um, there's like a helicopter that blows up at the beginning of the game, and you get a ton of scars and actually, fun fact, some shrapnel stuck in your skull um that's like a permanent fixture of the character right here so he does have this horn and it's cool he actually comes with multiple sizes of horn quote unquote little shrapnel pieces there's the smallest one i have the medium one size in there and that's kind of just the size that i like and then the largest one because during the game in the game uh it's a stealth action game of course um and so you can play through it however you want however uh you can play through it silently you can play through it you know guns blazing. Uh, you can play through it with only like tranquilizing and knocking enemies out, or you can play through it um, just killing anyone who gets in your way. And so the game, based on however many enemies you kill, the more enemies you kill, this little horn piece uh, sort of grows over time in the game um, to be large, sim similar to this one. Um, what, once you get to a certain point, actually, in the game, if you've killed um, enough people, your clothes will be constantly stained with blood, and the horn will be at its longest. And they deem that version, they call it Demon Snake in the game, which I think is really cool. Um, just sort of, because uh, Metal Gear Solid V is the definitive sort of turn to watch Big Boss turn from this more altruistic, heroic person into the future villain of the first Metal Gear Solid game, right? And so sort of his descent from grace, his descent from... Uh, heroism into villainy and so that's just a really cool detail of the game um, and a cool detail that they added in the figure that they didn't have to I will say this these little pieces are the worst because they are if you can look on there they're not actually like mushroom pegs right so they don't really tab in very securely they just kind of fit inside the little notch in the head and it's really hard to get them in there and it's really hard to make them stay so I literally I just super glued this one in because I'm not gonna be I like that they included this. I just wish they had had kind of mushroom pegs or just some other sort of system that made it peg in a little more securely. So I just glued this one in because he's going to have that in there and I don't mind not being able to switch them out. So, But it is a cool thing that they added in reference to the game. Um, also, so I actually have a bunch of straps on him that I got from GPS lot to like hold his guns up and stuff because again, like your loadout kind of determines a bit of what your look looks like, right? Because you can customize your character in the game to have the scarf or no scarf or different uniforms, different types of camo patterns, uh, and different types of guns, and the guns that you have will be, like, you know, in cutscenes and in 
gameplay um, and whatnot. So I have him in his sort of a full loadout right here. He's got the Riot SMG, which is super useful in the games. It fires rubber bullets, so it can take down enemies non-lethally. Um, I have this assault rifle. I don't know. Is it an M M16? Probably looks like one. Um, I don't know guns super well, guys. So anything I do know is, just comes from video games. And he has this rocket launcher on the back. Uh, the cool thing about this, though, is I thought there wasn't any way to store the guns, which is why I used these, like, straps um, from GPS a lot. But fun fact, at least for the assault rifles, there are two of them. There's a, this one and this silenced one, which is really cool. And you can actually also you can switch the stocks between those, uh, which is really neat. So, yeah. Again, that's another kind of aspect of the game. You can customize your, your guns completely. You can change the color of them. You can change the stocks that you have, the magazine size, the silencer, no silencer, whatever you really want, lights, laser pointers, all that stuff. Really cool. Uh, but yeah, I thought there was no way to like store it on this because in the game, your, like, your rocket launcher slash sniper rifle, whatever you have, will be on your back. Your um, sidearm will usually be in, in this holster. Uh, the Riot SMG is really big, but in the game it just sort of disappears into this holster, you know, video game magic. Um, and then your, uh, your main weapon, right, your assault rifles, your shotguns, those will sort of just magically kind of clip to the side right here. Uh, but it's like part of the iconic look of the character, I think, in the game, like it, this whole image right here. And so I really wanted to get that, and I thought I could only get it with the straps, but it turns out there's a little metal tab right here, a little metal clip on the pants, and these assault rifles, there's a little magnet in them. If you just put them there, they'll just stay. See, so like the weight is not being held up by the strap right now, that's all on the magnet. Yeah, that's it, the magnets are pulling it in. Oop. Uh, but again, yeah, it does kind of float around and maybe from posing it might get out of the way But yeah, that's a really cool thing that I didn't even know about the figure until I got the straps on and I kept on noticing it, kept wanting to go to this position um, So yeah, if you don't get the straps, you don't really you don't have to because it'll clip right there And there's also a metal buckle on the back for magnetizing the rifles as well I don't know if there's a magnet in the rocket launcher um i assume there would be but i haven't actually tried it out yet so maybe that's also another feature but again if you don't want to do the straps or get custom straps for these figures you don't really have to but i do like having the straps just because you can kind of put them wherever on the figure and they'll still hang and look nice and they're scaled well so i do like the straps um yeah there's also a couple of things i don't think people have pointed out in reviews he comes with a sticker sheet and on the sticker sheet these very tiny stickers for his watch, which goes on his bionic arm. Very hard to, to put in there, but I got it in there just fine. And there's also a sticker for the uh, the Walkman. It's a little sticker right there. Because the Walkman, a lot of people were complaining about it. Looks, oh, it looks really plain. It's not very detailed. And that's true, but the sticker definitely at least adds the little tape recorder aspect to it. Um, so, yeah. Look on the sticker sheet, it comes with the, there's like a soldier with like an ex exclamation point above his head. Um, so yeah, that's the basic figure. In general, I like the body. It's got plenty of articulation. Uh, this knee pad kind of bunches this up, but it's got double, jo double jointed legs, um, knees and elbows. So you can kind of get whatever pose you want tactically. Um, has, I think, two diaphragm joints, like one at the waist and one at the actual abdomen. Um, the head is on a ball joint on this piece right here. So you get plenty of movement there. Um, the hands are, this is my one complaint really about the figure is these weird wrist pegs because uh, they are typical ball joints it seems, right? However, they're at, they're set at an angle, right? So most pegs would come out horizontally to the hinge. These come out at like a 45 degree angle. And so whenever you rotate it, it, it swivels at a 45 degree angle. Again, not bad, and they're strong pegs. I'm not worried about breaking them or anything. It's just non-intuitive. And whenever you have a non-intuitive joint, you know, you're more likely to, like, just bend it the way you want it to rather than the way it actually bends, and so then you might break it. So careful of that. And it's just weird because none of the other joints are like that. You know, most of the other joints are set the ways you would expect them and can move just fine the way you want to. And so it's strange that they put these weird 45-degree uh, pegs on this figure. Um, the boots are really cool because he comes stocked with these single cast boots, which I know like a lot of Dam's toys and crazy figures come with, so people are probably used to those. 
But because like the production was taking so long for this figure, they also included um, a separate pair of boots and separate ankles. Here's the original ankles, just sort of a swivel and hinge, but not useful when it's submerged inside the boot, right? It's just, you only have the swivel there. But with this sort of two boot, two piece boot, you get plenty of ankle rocker and articulation and stuff. And that's really, really awesome. So I really enjoy that they included that as well, um, which is pretty freaking sweet. Uh, I will say though, uh, it's he is kind of hard to stand up a little bit um, just because the joints on the ankles aren't super, it's not that they're not tight, they're good joints. It's just they, they kind of spring back a little bit. And so sometimes getting them to stand up is a little difficult, but. Uh, but again, all this from like a third party figure, right? We have Mezco figures. They're the dominating force for um, 112 cloth goods covered figures. And honestly, the tailoring on this um, and just the scaling on the cloth is superior, I think, to pretty much every Mezco I've ever held. There's a lot of really nice Mezcos out there. Limb Toys really, really killed it on just the stitching um, and scaling. Like these clothes don't look baggy. They don't look oversized for the figure. Oh, and a knockdown snake there. Um, but yeah, it just scales really well and comes together really nicely. And the articulation, I, th I think because of that though, yeah, because the clothing is so form-fitting, quote unquote, he does get a little limited where the body wants to go more. The pants or the shirt will bunch up and it just won't let him go farther. But he can do lots of pretty basic action poses. Um, and he looks gosh dang good doing it, you know, so, uh, so yeah. I'm very happy with the figure overall. Um, as far as the likeness goes to um, Snake in the game, um, I think this head is really good. Uh, my friend says it looks a lot like Liam Neeson, which I actually kind of see that. Um, but I think I'm pretty sure somewhere that whenever Kojima designed Big Boss, like originally designed Big Boss, in Metal Gear Solid 4, I think, he had like modeled him after Liam Neeson. Am I making that up? Is that just a piece of trivia I made up or is that legit? Let me know in the comments below. But either way, I think the only thing I might do is darken up the beard a little bit because the sculpt is, look at that sculpt. It's all there for sure. Um, but I think I might darken up the beard to be a little more similar to the hair. Um, Cause yeah, on my custom one right here, um, this head definitely looks more realistic this is off of the uh, Vulcan Log figure, kind of the amazing Yamaguchi snake. And so there's things about this head that are very anime, quote unquote, very cartoony almost. But there's also certain aspects of it that I'm like, oh, this actually looks more like Snake from the game. Uh, and this just ends up looking like Liam Neeson, which again is cool. And maybe that's also just like a licensing thing since Slim Toys is not is a third party company and they don't actually have the license to make Metal Gear Solid figures. Um, they probably, maybe they couldn't use um, Snake's actual likeness from the game. And so they just got as close as they could without crossing any lines, but they might get in trouble with Liam Neeson and his agent might be giving them a call because I think it does look a lot like him in certain angles, um, but I still think it looks freaking sweet and it looks really awesome. Um, as far as accessories go, this, depending on which version you get, there's the B++, the A++, and the S++. The S++ comes with everything you could want. The A++ is, I think, the most serviceable, serviceable version. You get, um, I think, all the accessories you need, and it's uh, more affordable than the S++. The B++, I never understood. The pictures made it seem like it only came with this head which is why I was like, oh, even though it's the cheapest version, I don't want to get it. That may not be true though. It may come with this head and this head. I may just not know because even for the S++, I had no clue they were including this second assault rifle. Like in all the promotional images, it just showed one assault rifle and I thought, okay, maybe the silencer will be removable or something. But lo and behold, we get two separate rifles and I did not know that. So again, it may just be uh, something like that. Um, let's see what else the, yeah. So it comes with this mast head. I never actually used this in the game. I don't know what this is. Someone let me know in the comments if you uh, just used it in the game even once. I don't remember this at all. Looks very Metal Gear inspired, right? And it looks legit, very Psycho mantis -y. But yeah, I do not remember using this. Um, and that pops on, no problem. It looks really cool. 
Again, already mentioned the other assault rifle. You can switch the two stocks between these two. I think that's the only customizable parts. Can't take off the silencer. You can't take out the magazines. Um, yeah, that, they are separate pieces. So if you really want to pull them out, you will. But I don't think they're meant to be like interchangeable or anything like that. Uh, the Riot SMG looks great. It's got the blue paint and everything. The magazine on this one pops out on me from time to time. But again, just the way you look at it, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's meant to do that, like on Mezco figures, you know, where you pull it out and it's got the bullet on the top and it's like, oh, this is clearly a removable slash swappable piece. So that's what I'm supposed to do with it. Um, yeah, this assault rifle looks really good. Uh, he comes with this rocket launcher. The rocket launcher is cool because it comes with two of these um, rockets and they fit in like so very simply, very easily. And that looks really good. I dig that quite a lot. Uh, so those look pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, he has his Trank pistol, his little tranquilizer gun in his holster. This holster is really nice. It's made out of like a rubbery plastic. And I love that even when you put the gun in, you can peg the thing all the way in. I've had a number of Black Series figures before, or just Hasbro figures with like the sort of pin holster. And just a lot of the times when you get the gun in the holster, you can't you can't really push the pin all the way in just because the gun's in the way, but the gun's very thin. It's got an extended magazine. Um, again, that's like a customizable option in the game. Um, if we can focus on this, you can see the actual detail. Look at that. Yeah, looks great. Very game, very game accurate. Um, this is his Trank gun. This is like the gun that you have kind of pre-equipped in the game. Um, uh, I didn't use this at all, actually, on my first playthrough. On <laughs> my first playthrough, my sidearm was the Riot SMG. I used that all the time. Second playthrough, I went with the, the Trank, Tranquilizer pistol. Um, yeah, and so actually, fun fact, he comes with several different hands. Uh, he comes with a relaxed hand. He comes with a fisted hand. And he comes with a cigar holding hand. Uh, mine came with two cigar holding hands. There's supposed to be a gun holding hand that has like an angled grip um, to hold his guns and stuff, um, but I didn't come with one of those, so I got two cigar holding hands. So I just took an X-Acto knife and cut along the trigger fingers, and actually, um, from the other reviews I've seen, he now actually holds these guns much more tightly and at a much straighter angle than the other hand would have allowed. So I actually really, I, I don't know, I really like that. Like, even if it had come with the trigger holding hand, I think I still would have ended up just sacrificing my cigar holding hand for a gun holding hand so i don't really mind the defect of getting two cigar holding hands really at all but i'm a customizer and i do that kind of thing all the time to my figures so if that's like a deal breaker for some people i totally understand oh uh, yeah the pistol's cool fits in the holster really nice and there's still plenty of room for the peg to go into the holster it folds up it's a nice soft rubbery plastic boom boom look at that Looks good, looks seamless. Um, the straps are also just really impressive on the figure, right? Um, all over the buckles and everything, and nothing's really come loose on me. These pouches did come off, they just kind of popped out, um, so I just had to glue them back in. Uh, so I don't know, again, mileage may vary. Um, again, it is a third-party company, and I still think it's an incredible quality, but yeah, there's some things on this that might be a little finicky as far as just the positioning of all the straps and how tightly everything is. Um, I really like his little pouch right here on the back. I think this is for his like Fulton extraction device. That's like what he uses to recruit troops with the with the balloon. Um, he picked up in the helicopter. He's got his canteen. This I think can open. There's like a. It feels like there's a piece of foam in here keep it, keeping this, letting this have shape. So I don't know. Maybe you could, you know, pry off the straps and open it up and actually store stuff in there if you really wanted uh, but it's really cool that at the scale it's like an actual bag it's not just like a solid piece or something the canteen is made of plastic um, but very detailed and looks very good just clips the belt very easily easily um, he also comes with this knife and sheath very small um, very detailed though very accurate they got a little silver on the blade there very accurate to the game um, and in the game, yeah, it stores on the back of his belt, and I didn't know how it went in there, but there's actually a little little loop in between. Oh, we can't see it in there, maybe, very little bit. Um, there's a little loop right there, there you go, uh, between the pouch right here and the belt, and this little sheath just tucks right into that loop. Because, um, yeah, in the game, his knife is right there. He reaches back with that hand and pulls it out. 
Um, so that's super cool that they also include that detail. Um, other details on this guy. These shoulder pieces, right? The Diamond Dogs logo. Well, there's the Diamond Dogs logo and there's this, the DD right there. Um, they are actually separate little cloth pieces. So those can move and turn those with the arm. You can position them however you like, which is a nice little cool added effect. Um, the watch is a separate piece. It's a separate strap, <clears throat> again, with the little sticker on there. Uh, and yeah, I just pull off the hand and you just kind of shove it up onto the wrist. And yeah, they really sized the straps on this guy really, really well. Like the straps for the night vision goggles or the desert goggles or the gas mask. Like these straps are perfectly sized to fit over his head. Um, you don't have to worry about them coming loose or losing elasticity. I, in some ways I wish they used elastic, but elastic can like you know, get loose over time. And so the fact that they just went with straps that are perfectly sized is actually really cool. Um, and the same is for the watch. Like in the game, he actually wears the watch kind of high on, it's not like on his wrist or anything. It's wears it kind of high on the, on the forearm. So that's accurate as well. And the bionic arm looks really, really good. Um, got the gold detail in there, the sort of burned red look and fading into the maroon. That looks really good. The gray on the hand. Uh, yeah, just chock full of awesome sculpt and detail um, from this company, so I really dig that a lot. He comes with a couple of hands for the bionic hand. Um, this is his uh, relaxed hand slash kind of weapon support hand, maybe. Um, though you could use this also as like a more weapon support hand sort of thing, or you could maybe use it to hold the cigar or just multi multi-purpose hand. Uh, this hand is the closest you'll get to a fist for his bionic punch, um, or his knife holding hand. You can hold the knife in this really nicely, so that's cool. And then, of course, his super iconic, uh, Metal Gear Solid V cover pose hand. Again, I don't know, I don't remember him doing this pose in the game, but this was, like, on a lot of the covers, uh, for the actual game itself. Um, so, it's always cool when they include that in the game, in the, in the figure. Um, so yeah, that's those hands he comes with. The S++ S++ version comes with the alternate hand. In the game, you can also customize your bionic arm to give it different gadgets and stuff. This is the basic one. The ability you have is just the bionic punch, where he just literally hits them as hard as he can while running full speed <laughs> with his robot hand. So that's really cool. This, I believe, is the stun arm. Uh, it's been a minute since I played the game. I think that's what this one is. Um, yeah, in the game, it actually has these little... Uh, metal like prods on it and yeah you pretty much can charge a high voltage shock um, and you kind of just hit the opponent and they are knocked unconscious um, so that's a cool uh, accessory as well and so this again this one comes with the sort of relaxed weapon support hand and the iconic you know, your solid five pose um, those are the only two hands that come with the alternate bionic arm. I kind of wish it came with all the bionic arms, you know? Um, I don't know what other accessories I would have traded in for all of them, but I really like the rocket arm or the, uh, or the golden arm. Like, there's just a lot of cool customizable things, but it is nice that you get at least a couple options. And again, those just separate at the elbow and pop on and off very simply. Um, what else? Comes with the chicken hat, which is really cool. <laughs> Uh, the chicken hat is a item in the game that if you play the missions a couple times and you keep losing, the game says, here, try wearing the chicken hat. And I, I, I never used the chicken hat, just out of pride, of course. Because um, the chicken hat just made it much easier to defeat the boss or beat each level, whatever it was. It was like, equip the chicken hat, and then so long as you don't engage with enemies directly, they'll never discover you while you're in stealth mode. Um, which, yeah, is very helpful if you're, like, stuck on a mission and stuff, but again, for the sake of pride, I just, I guess that's the cost, right? It's like, oh, you can beat the level much more easily, but you have your character look like this, you know? So, uh, but it's a really awesome thing that they included in this package, and he's got the really lazy eyes and very accurate to the game and very ridiculous and silly, so just a fun accessory. I really love that that was included. Um, and yeah, uh, the other things, these are really cool. Um, these are like his accessories. I'm just gonna put him right here, kind of stand him up, and I'm gonna take his take his noggin off. Get up close. There we go. And we're gonna try and equip some of these accessories. So first we have the night vision goggles. 
He was wearing this at the beginning of the game. Kept you waiting, huh? Um, that whole bit. And again, you gotta just watch the horn, um, the shrapnel piece, depending on which one you have on there, may pop on easier, much more difficult. Um, but yeah, that fits really nicely and looks really, really sick. And yeah, there's like a fluorescent green kind of bulb in there so that when it catches the light, you kind of see the, the green in there. Look at that. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, and the night vision goggles are like an equipable part of the game. Um, I don't think I ever really used them. Probably just from my, I would, there were so many different items you could use in the game that I really didn't take full advantage of just because I would forget that they were there. Like, like the snake decoys and the, um, and even like, yeah, even basic things like trip mines and things like that. Like I just, uh, there's like, the game is so creative and gives you absolute freedom on how you tackle missions. And I was pretty straightforward because I'm not a very experienced gamer. You know, I'm just not, I'm not actually that creative as far as gaming goes, but the game gives you all the options in the world, so. Uh, and so does this figure. Um, I'm having trouble put the goggles up on his forehead because of this horn. Um, and actually, yeah, at the beginning of the game, he didn't have the horn yet, so he was able to lift the goggles up kind of like that. And I guess you can kind of get it to work. Yeah, if you want the goggles up like that. So that looks pretty sweet. Um, we'll pop the head off again, make sure Snake doesn't fall over. And we will put on the, we'll put on the desert goggles. Um, another item in the game that I never used or equipped or anything, if it even was equipable. I, don't, I think it was definitely in a cutscene or something. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the game, the first chunk of the missions take place in Afghanistan, so you're on lots of rocky terrain, lots of desert area. Um, and for the most part, this is kind of your look, uh, the kind of tiger stripe camo or desert camo, I think at that time. And then this like desert scarf, which I just really love, very unique part of Snake's look in this game. Um, I don't think he wore a scarf in any of the other games, Solid Snake or Big Boss ever did. So I really liked having the scarf on. And I guess you could kind of try and get the scarf over his nose. Um, the scarf is an interesting little accessory it's essentially just a rectangular piece of cloth with the wire on the top and the bottom. It took me forever to kind of get it to look this natural and this, like, to hang this well. So I'm not going to unbunch it right now. Um, just because, it, again, it took forever to kind of wrap it the way that I like it. And, and I really do like it on the figure. But, again, in the game, the idea was, like, I think he would wear the goggles and then have the scarf over his nose. Um, getting that kind of cool desert look. So, yeah, super awesome accessory. Um, and yeah, in the game, and again, he looks just fine without it, I think, as well. But uh, I always prefer, I always equipped the scarf when I was wearing this outfit before I got the uh, sneaking suit, like you see here. Um, and even then, I think I, even, I, I like the sneaking suit in that game, but I think in the end, I always kind of gravitated back towards his rough and tumble desert camo look. I just thought it looked so awesome. Oh, yep, see? Ankles, they're giving out on me. That's okay. I'll get snake standing there. Cool. Um, and then the final one, yep, the, the gas mask. Um, yes. So this one is a little tricky. It's got the two straps. I think I... How do I normally do this? I think I just kind of put the straps on the head and maybe, oh, yep, yeah, maybe this will work better. Just go one over the ponytail, over the face. Oh, maybe I should get them both over the ponytail. Yeah. Oh, that works way better. I used to go over the head. I'm so dumb. There we go. There we go. Just kind of move the straps up to where you, where it makes sense. And yeah, look at that. Isn't that so cool? Come on, focus for me. There you go. Yeah, and that is super slick. Um, there's a very 
heartbreaking mission towards the end of the game where you kind of go in with this look right here. Um, very relatable. It's during a quarantine of a mass-released uh, pathogen or virus. Um, and yeah, you got to go into one of the quarantine wings on the mother base and take care of the issue. Um, that mission is just haunting. Um, super, super awesome, but just heartbreaking as well. If you guys have played the game, you know what I'm talking about. I won't give it away for anyone who hasn't played it, but go play the game. There's a mission where you get to wear this gas mask and go in to the quarantine zone. So that's super, super cool. Um, again, they just really, really outfitted this guy with every considerable option you could kind of want for the figure. Um, and I really respect Limb Toys for that. I respect them a ton for it. Um, so yeah, we'll get him back to the way I like him. And I think, oh, there's one more accessory I think I need to talk about, and it is his his iPhone. Uh, in the game, it's called the iDroid. Um, I don't know if that was just a clever little hit, knock on iPhones, especially since this game, I think, took place during the 1970s, 1980s or something like that. So iPhones weren't really a thing back then. But um, yeah, the iDroid was a thing. And this is like your, this is your menu in the game. Uh, your, this is how you call in your helicopters. It's how you... Um, look at your mission briefings and it's how you scan blueprints it's just a huge part of the game um and so it always has a sort of holographic readout and they also included a little piece right here you see it has a little base where it's supposed to project from and then plugs into a little hole right in there and boom and i think this is supposed to be like a map essentially this if i remember this is what a map kind of looks in the game those are maybe buildings that's like if you're your objective and that's that little arrow is you so super, super cool that you can have him hold his iDroid with the little projection screen up. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, also can't forget to talk about his his electronic cigar. And that's what this is. It's like his little vapor uh, that comes from his cigar. And the cigar is interesting just because it's like how you pass time in the game if you want it to progress quicker from like day to night time. Um, you just smoke your cigar for a couple hours, it seems, and time goes by super fast. So that's, like, one aspect of the game. Like, if you're, it, it's helpful if you're in the field and um, you're trying to infiltrate a certain camp or something and it's daytime and you want to go at nighttime, you don't just want to sit around in the game and do nothing. Uh, this is essentially lets you just kind of fast forward to nighttime or vice versa. So another cool accessory with a pretty sweet smoke effect. Um... Yeah, I almost wish they'd included a couple versions, like maybe a version with the smoke effect and one without, you know? Because um, I like the smoke effect, but also I think in some ways it doesn't look... It, yeah, it, in some ways you're kind of like, what am I looking at here exactly? A hologram flower or something? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it would look fine just with the cigar even. Um, so that's cool. And those are all the accessories that he comes with. Again, it's a ton of stuff um, for the S++ version. Uh, the A++, I think, comes with everything minus the chicken hat, the extra gas mask head, the rocket launcher, and the alternate bionic arm. So, And th that, honestly, I could have probably done without these accessories, and I probably could have done with, the, with just the, um, uh, the accessories from the A++. I think the one thing that I was leaning towards getting, though, was um, the alternate bionic arm. I think that was the other. That was the real chase accessory for me. Because um, even in the game, I didn't use rocket launchers a ton. I always preferred to go with, uh, I think, riot SMG, assault rifle, and sniper rifle. That was kind of my main loadout. But you have multiple loadouts in the game. So, um, so yeah, this is really, really cool. I love this figure a ton. Definitely one of my favorites of this year. And... Again, the only real official articulated, official, right? I mean, it's third party, but official, well-articulated, highly detailed, one-twelfth scale snake figure. You know, because, yeah, as far as, like, snake figures from Editor Solid were kind of been in a pinch. Like, McFarlane used to do them for a little bit, and they were good for the time, but they haven't aged very gracefully, and they weren't really well-articulated sometimes, and the Metacom ones... Those were essentially just statues, um, and any other snake figures that are well detailed are usually Play Arts Kai or 
for like one twelfth, one sixth scale. Um, and so for one twelfth collectors, you know, we've kind of been in the lurch, uh, which is why I made these two figures. Um, I made this one first. This is based off of him, again, in the Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid Five, based off of his sneaking suit, which is the suit you get in the game. I forget after which mission. Um, it's like during your time in Afghanistan, though, uh, after this suit. You get the sneaking suit, and the sneaking suit makes it to where um, your footsteps are essentially silent, so you can sneak up on enemies much, much easier, um, much quicker than in this suit, because your footsteps would just make a lot of noise, so you'd have to be really, really slow and careful. So the sneaking suit um, not only looked really awesome, I think it also had upgrades. Like, you could upgrade the suit. You couldn't upgrade these. Um, you could upgrade the suit to have better defense and protection from firearms and um, things like that. Um, so, yeah. This is, like, the first snake figure I ever had in the sense that, you know, we hadn't been... There weren't any official releases or anything. Um, but I guess, yeah, we did have the... Uh, amazing Yamaguchi snake figure which is where I got this head and I had that figure for a while and that's where a lot of the pieces on this figure came from that figure was cool I just I think I'm one of those people that doesn't like amazing Yamaguchi's kind of old setup um, they've been doing a lot of cool things these days but yeah the old setup for like their joints and everything they would be very floaty and they would like uh, gap up a ton when you pose them around and just they also don't feel super solid in your hands like they, you know, they feel kind of brittle. Um, so uh, I got a Mezco PX exclusive Deathstroke. That's what this body is on. Um, I cut off the collar, cut off, I took the belts and harnesses off and everything. Uh, and then I just kind of Frankenstein this figure from those parts from the Amazing Yamaguchi one, the Vulcan Log one. Um, and so that was really interesting because this head came in three separate parts this was like an articulated point and this was articulated this back hair piece and this front piece so i kind of just glued it all together uh used some hot glue to fill in the recesses so that it would fit on the mezco ball joints and that fits just fine and works just great um because yeah again the sculpt on this head is really really cool for the most part i think the eye i think that the blue on the eye right here might be a little big um, right, just for the scale mixes. I look bugged out a little bit, but luckily you can move the eye around, so I kind of moved it to where it would be, you know, very angled with the eyebrows, so he looks nice and mean. And the scars on this one look really good, the beard looks awesome, and this hair sculpt is cool, and there's his little shrapnel horn, so. Yeah, that's about the size it starts out as in the game. It's very small, just a little nub. Um, yeah, and then the weapons from this figure also came from that Vulcan Log figure. Um, the way they did the, uh, the little assault rifle on the hip effect in this one, uh, he has a little hole in his canteen here, uh, and there's like a little black piece with a little peg that you would just attach to the side of the gun, and that would just plug in. Not my favorite system. Again, I like it much more on this figure, the straps that I was able to use, but this still gives off the same silhouette, right? He's got the assault rifle on his hip, he's got the sidearm right here on his thigh and he's got the sniper rifle on his back that is also just was held on the original figure with just a peg and so i just kind of drilled a little peg in the back of deathstroke's armor there and that poked in right there while we're looking at the back uh the knife again all these pieces came from the vulcan log figure the knife was here it is uh, let me it's really tight in there uh yeah really cool nicely detailed um and the sheath was just part of this little uh, again, his little um, Fulton extraction device. This is all made of plastic. There's no cloth on on that Vulcan Log figure. And so I just kind of glued that to the harness of the Deathstroke figure and put the knife there so that you get the same effect that you get on the Ahab figure, the knife right there in the back ready for his hand to reach around and pull out. Um, this holster, um, it's yeah, it's just kind of open at the top. I think I cut away some parts. Did I? Maybe? Yeah, I cut away a little bit just so it was easier to get the holster in and out, glued the strap around the leg, and he has the Trank pistol in his hand right there, and that fits really good and works really well. Um, again, this hand, this bionic arm, uh, was from the Vulcan Log figure, and um, yeah, it looks really good. I, I, I really do like kind of the shiny red that they went with for this one. Um, and yeah, the silver, this is a detail, and the silver between the knuckles comes out really nicely on this. I don't think that's actually a detail that is on the 
Ahab figure. Um, there's his watch right there. That's just a sculpted part on. Uh, yeah, to get this on here, I just kind of cut off the um, mushroom peg that was on the arm and just glued this on. Didn't really care about having this rotate because I don't think it really rotated in the game. So, uh, but yeah, at least at the very least, this figure has a traditional um, ball hinge, you know, so at least it goes forward and back normally instead of at a 45 degree angle. And it, but it, it works exactly the same as the Ahab figure. It's just a, you just plug in the alternate hands. And I think the alternate hands that this guy came with was the weapon support hand, a fisted hand, the Metal Gear Solid 5 peace sign kind of pose. And I think that's, I think that's it. Uh, he also did come with the, for his alternate bionic arm, he came with the rocket fist, which is really cool. Um, so it is unfortunate that I didn't really come up with a way to make those interchangeable, so I get the rocket fist, but I kind of always preferred the regular bionic arm. Anyway, so that's pretty sweet. Um, any other details? Yeah. Just overall, the Deathstroke body uh, kind of made this figure all come together. Because, um, yeah, in the game you do have this sort of big chest armor piece, you have these knee pads. I cut the knee pads off of the um, Vulcan log. Venom Snake, uh, also these shoulder pads, those came off of him. Took off the old Deathstroke shoulder pads to replace these ones. Here's the Walkman, right? Listen all, listen to all your mission briefing tapes. Um, all these straps are just the plastic that I had to cut off of the actual legs and shave down. That was a lot of work. Hollow those out to get around the legs and stuff. Here's this little strap for the Fulton device, and yeah, you can see the little glue residue there. But... I don't mind that one bit. And there's the peg hole for his sniper rifle. So, yeah, for the long time, this was sort of just my definitive snake figure, and it still is awesome. Like, I don't think, like, whenever this figure was first announced, I was like, oh, it's going to replace my Metal Gear Solid Five snake. But because I really love the way this recipe came together, and um, I really love the sneaking suit and everything, like, yeah, I can totally, there's room enough in my display for both of these characters. Especially since, like, yeah, we don't know if, is this, like, the, is this all that I'm going to have for Metal Gear Solid representation as far as highly articulated, highly detailed 112 figures? I don't know. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown of that guy. And then uh, you guys have already seen my video, probably, if you haven't, go check it out. My just little breakdown of my Metal Gear Solid 3 Big Boss slash Naked Snake from Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. Um... Yeah, a lot of the credit for this figure goes to the Mezco Diabolic, which this figure is built on. Um, and then the cloth goods were from a Damn Toys figure that I painted myself. Uh, the weapons are just kind of from fodder bins and places all over. Uh, got the little knife in there on his chest and on the straps. The straps are from GPS Lot. The pouches and gun and head sculpt are from the Medicom Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. They called it a figure. It was a statue. Um... And yeah, he came together really nicely. He's still probably my favorite of the bunch, uh, just because I was surprised at how well he came together. Um, and yeah, I really just love the way he feels. He, he articulates better, I think, than this guy, um, just because there's a little more room, a little more bagginess in these clothes uh, for him to get the full range of his articulation. Um, and this guy still is really good, don't get me wrong. Um, I think I also just kind of prefer the more video game looking head sculpt um you know like yeah maybe it doesn't look as good by today's standards but it looks like he did in metal gear solid 3 you know um but yeah it's just amazing what video game graphics can do nowadays where video game characters look more and more like just real actual people so um so yeah there is plenty of room on my shelf for all three of these guys um who do you guys like the most? You know, which ones would you, if you could get any version of of Snake from any game, uh, like what version do you hope that some company, maybe like Limb Toys, comes around and makes next? You know, um, do you want more Metal Gear Solid Five versions or characters, or do you want something from some of the other games? Uh, I would, I think, for my Snake trilogy right here, uh, something I would really like. Um, if I could only get like another snake figure and only one more, I would really love a good solid snake um, from Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. 
that would be really cool. Um, Solid Snake is the main man after all. Um, I think Big Boss is my favorite character, though, overall from the from the series. Like, I like Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 5, I think, the best out of all of them. Um, so these are kind of my definitive ones, but I would love to have give Solid Snake some real honest love on my shelf. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of my breakdown and review of these three figures. Uh, here's hoping that down the road, uh, Limb Toys continues to kill it. I'm really excited for their future releases. Uh, they have a... They have a Resident Evil style Leon on the way. I might pick that up. I've never played Resident Evil, but um, with the new remake that came out last year of Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear, Resident Evil, was it two um, or one? I forget. Uh, either way, I've always wanted to, I'm, again, I'm a very inexperienced gamer and I'm trying to experience new things and play new games. Right now I'm playing through Doom 2016. A lot of people recommended that and I'm having an absolute blast. Um, so, who knows? Maybe I'll play Resident Evil by then, and I can pick up Lim Toy's uh, Leon figure. Um, and maybe down the road they'll uh, do other characters. I know they've announced and teased a Joel and Ellie from The Last of Us, which I'm definitely, definitely, definitely looking uh, to try and get when that comes out. And I'm also really hoping for an Arthur Morgan from them, because I just finished, be I just finished playing Red Dead Redemption 2, um, and that game just blew me away. I, wow, I absolutely loved it. Um, I cried uh, at the end. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm high on the cowboy, uh, outlaw, uh, train right now. And I would love, love, love a one twelfth scale, uh, Arthur Morgan. I know that Lim is making a, um, one six scale, and that may actually just be the one that I get to tie me over in the end, but. My heart truly does belong to one one twelfth scale, not one sixth. So uh, we shall see what the future holds. But yeah, thanks guys for stopping by. Really appreciate you on my Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're not following me on Instagram, that's where I post most of my uh, most of all of my custom stuff. Uh, the YouTube is like a secondary thing, but I really appreciate all you guys following me here on YouTube and keeping in touch with me. I really love interacting with you guys and just being a part of this community. You guys are what make it so special. Um, so yeah, big, big thanks to all of you. Um, but yeah, follow me at Figure This Customs on Instagram if you want to keep on seeing more kind of custom toy breakdowns and things like that, because uh, I'm always working and I'm always cooking up something new. So uh, appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, love you. God bless, and go be yourselves.